Welcome to the Daily Dodge betting show on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Sitting alongside me is Corey Sparks, the office fantasy football expert. This week we've got our highs and lows, uh, some more lessons that we learned, a fantasy rescue plan with all these injuries that are happening, uh, and then of course our picks for NFL Week 6. Corey, I'm on the board. I'm on the board. I got my first pick right. First uh, one's out of the way. That's the yeah, hardest one. Exactly. Like Kevin said in the office, you know, sometimes you just need to win one. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you need to see the ball go through the net. Um, so let's start there. I'm feeling positive. I'm feeling good for the week. What did you get right in week five? Yeah, Brees Hall is 100% back. So I went after any time touchdown. I kind of want to give you half of my win on there because I was taking him anyway. And then you gave me the full confidence by saying, look, Brees Hall is actually going to get reps now. He's been way more efficient than Delvin Cook. Obviously, this was not a matter of production. It was more or less, this guy's coming back from a scary ACL injury. The Jets are just squandering, trying to find any type of franchise caliber player, specifically now that Aaron Rodgers has gone down too. So I think, uh, yeah, just relying on Brees Hall going forward is really good news. It went well for me last week. Would highly recommend it for somebody who just had a season high, 25 touches. Phenomenal fantasy running back, as we saw last year. Uh, Value-wise, this comes at the perfect time. So, you know, many big names are injured. We'll be talking about that later on in the show this is somebody who should be skyrocketing up your rankings right now and then personal note my bears won a game for the first time in like three yeah thank you (laughs) sympathetic clap um first time in like 300 plus days not the best news for me because now i'm probably going to feel inclined to start betting on justin fields or putting him on my fantasy team starting to buy in on him i have to remember and all of you should as well he just played two of the worst defenses in the nfl but good week overall good week riding high gonna try not to fall off a cliff here going into our third week of, of guesses, but feeling good. Well, like I said, I got a pick right. Yes. Uh, Bijan Robinson did score yes. a touchdown. Yes, uh, he did. I was nervous, though. It wasn't looking good. That was a slow game against the Texans. Yeah. Neither team really looked good on offense, and Bijan finally did get one, and so we're on the board. One in five. That's all right. Only up from here. Exactly. Uh, and then the other thing I got right was not giving up on the Bengals. The Bengals were three and a half, or three to two and a half point favorites uh, against the Cardinals on the road, and they looked way better. Oh, they yeah. they looked. I won't say back because I'm not there yet with the Bengals, but they looked really good, and I'm excited for them moving forward. Joe Burrow was more mobile. I was. I'm glad that I was on the right side of that one. Of course, I didn't give that pick out on the show. No, um, why would you? Right? But that's how all my picks <laughs> seem to be going lately. Is that when I give them out on the show, they don't hit, and then when I just take them in my personal life, they're actually not horrible. The ones you so, throw under the rug do well. Yeah, this week, <laughs> this week it's different though. I'm feeling good this week. Um, I guess I'll go into my lows. Um, I doubted the Eagles. Okay. I doubted the Eagles. I picked the Rams plus four and a half. I said it to some of my friends that that was kind of a fake sharp pick. Like, a lot of the money was coming in late on the Rams. Um, but a lot of the picks were on the Eagles, of course. And, yeah, mm-hmm. I ended up betting the Rams, lost on that. They didn't look good. It looked like they could maybe backdoor at the end. Yeah. Uh, but they weren't able to get it done, so got that one wrong. Um, I picked the Bears under. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that moving forward. Uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But – I picked that game before Dick Buckus died. See, you can't predict that. So I, yeah. I, yeah, I get that's a low, but at least that's something you can look back on and go, I controlled absolutely nothing yeah. with that scenario. Like, absolutely everything broke loose after that. So, yeah. I, I think that game could very likely still go under if Dick Buckus was – that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, because the Bears, they, they set it after the game. They then – had more to play for because they're not playing for Matt Eberflus, that's for sure. No. So it gave him something to play for. Mm-hmm. But maybe Thursday night over-unders aren't a great idea to begin with. Uh, and then my lowest of lows for the week was be going 0-2 against the, in the Packers game. I picked the Packers to win outright, and I picked that game to go over. Uh, they kind of went w- together uh, in that if the Packers win, that means the offense bounces back. Mm. That means we come out hot like they had been talking about for the 11 days before the game. <laughs> they are still talking about now. Yeah. They're still, yeah, they're still saying they need to do it. Yeah, we, we know. They're, yeah, getting this is outscored, a problem. they're getting outscored 54 to 6 in the first half of their last three games. It's like that's almost impossibly bad. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, 0 2 there. I won't be picking on my team anymore. So say, is We're, this you, like, taking the blame? Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for a scapegoat. Yeah. He's right there. <laughs> and, and well, and I picked them minus one, and they closed at plus two and a half. 
That was a weird swing. So, yeah. I, yeah, Aaron Jones wasn't healthy. I thought he was going to play, and I thought that game was going to look a lot different than the 17-13 game that it did. Right. Okay. Your lows? No interception for Russ. Uh, that one sucked. I really thought going up against the Jets that this guy's going to throw picks. The Jets defense, they picked off Mahomes twice and Josh Allen three times. So I'm like, okay, there's two high-caliber quarterbacks. I know we can't use transitive property too much here, but I'm not exactly going to put Russ in the same tier as them. Four sacks, two forced fumbles, seven tackles for loss, and the cherry on top was the fact that last play was a Hail Mary. Sauce Gardner jumped in front of everybody and dropped an interception. So not, you know, not really one that I regret, just poor luck. I mean, we trusted the matchup. We knew this team is leaning on their defense, especially since they lost their franchise quarterback for the next couple of years in their first drive. This defense is their strength. It played phenomenal. Cards just didn't go my way, but um, that's fine. And then Clayton Kershaw postseason blow up. We've seen this. We've seen this story before. Um, I played the experience game here. Kershaw has had numerous postseason blow ups. It's not his first time. I understand that. This is a Diamondback Cinderella story that just gets crazier and crazier. Figured I could rely on a Cy Young winner. I was wrong. I'll just I'll take that one on the chin. Yeah, and if the Dodgers didn't get eliminated last night, I saw that they were going to pitch Kershaw again. Yeah. And that, I don't understand that decision after that game. But with all this being said, there were silver linings. We did learn things. We did take oh, yeah. things away from the week. Uh, what were some of your lessons that you learned in week five? Yeah, kind of returning to what you brought up about the Bengals, how we're not ready to say they're completely back yet, but I will say cream rises to the top. You know, the Bengals offense has been fending off a lot of concerns. They're dealing with a lot of adversity. You have Joe Burrow being injured. You have T. Higgins going down. You have subpar play. You have the interview with Jamar Chase saying, I'm always expletive open, right? But, I mean, do not fear. He always is open. Just saw a stat a couple of days ago. He's at a league-high 40 routes so far where he is distinguished by advanced analytics as open. So this guy's getting open more often than anybody else backing up his talk. Yeah, weird game going up against the Cardinals. I, I didn't think it was going to be three points close, but I also didn't think they'd blow the doors off on borderline, and they did. Uh, we saw everything on full display. Burrow cleared 300 yards. I think things are starting to return back to where they are, and even when there are inter, you know big injuries, when there's adversity, I think the Bengals are one of those six or seven teams that are going to find a way to get through. We saw the slow start last year. We saw it again this year. It looked a little more scary because injuries were thrown in there. But I think we just got to trust teams like the Bengals, like the Bills, like the Chiefs, if we're talking about the AFC. NFC's loaded right now. Uh, but that's one of them. And then beware of the next man up. I think you're going to like this topic because it talks about the value of running backs, which, as we know, they're pretty replaceable. Uh, One-man workhorse running backs are a thing of the past. Running backs are extremely replaceable when you get good production on a week-by-week -week basis. I mean, Derrick Henry and Najee Harris are being outperformed right now. Ty J. Spears is more efficient just flat out than Derrick Henry. We will touch on that later. And Jalen Warren is, has way more pass-catching upside. He's the second favorite target on the Steelers. So Derrick Henry, Najee Harris owners, beware of usage going down. If you see that snap count continuing to fall, I love sleeper for this, uh, sleeper fantasy football, that's possible. But um, if you see them starting to lose their role, I would honestly deal these two guys before it's too late. They're starting running backs right now. They're the number one guy. Can't promise that'll be the case a month from now. I think this last draft might have been the last time we see first round running backs. Yeah, I, I it think could they're going to be done doing it because, especially in the off season where all these running backs are talking about how they need to get paid more and get their fair share. I guess Jonathan Taylor did get his contract recently, but that was insane. Still, teams don't want to do it, and all the running backs seem to do is just end up getting hurt and missing games. You know, and yeah, um, lessons I learned: don't pick a side in the Ravens Steelers games. Just don't. No need to. Uh, I had Ravens minus four. That was an ugly game. Uh, Ravens had pretty much every chance they could to cover that game and win by a decent margin, and they blew it at every chance they could. Uh, that was an ugly game. Those games are always ugly. It seems like they're always one-score games, and there's really no need to even pick a side. I feel like those should just be auto-unders, and we just got to mark that down and make sure to do it. Um, the Steelers' defense – is what is legit. They they are, and we know that. Um, Harbaugh kicked a field or went for four, went for it on fourth down oh, instead of kicking decision. a field goal at the yeah. end of the half. Uh, and that in a game like these where you need all the points you can get, that changed the game, and they ended up never scoring again. <laughs> and the Ravens wide receivers dropped, I think, seven passes, which led the league, and it was horrendous. Nelson Aguilar, Zay Flowers, everybody, everybody was dropping passes. OBJ got hurt. 
I'm angry at the Ravens. I'm really mad about that game still. Uh, the other lesson I learned is no more Bears unders. The Bears, whether they score the points themselves or they <laughs> let up the points. So total unders, yeah. We're that's not just no unders it. in Bears games. Um, I can credit the tragedy game as much as I want, hmm. but that game still went over by – Almost three touchdowns. I think it was 16 points over the total. Right. Um, yeah, so we're, we're not going to do that anymore. The, that defense is not good. They're hurt. Uh, and the Bears' offense seems like it's coming together a little bit, which is actually kind of exciting. I'm excited for you. I'm excited Thank for you. my roommate. Um, Maybe we'll get like three wins this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so then let's add to the canceled list. Oh, boy. Uh, I only have a pair for this week. Um Last week, we went over all the teams that were up until week five, and now this is just week five specific. I'm canceling the Ravens after that. I w I'm not going to bet on them anymore. Can't blame you. I really believe in this Ravens team. They're much better than that game, and they looked way better uh, than the Steelers in that game. They still lost. There was too much ugliness happening. I still love Lamar Jackson. I think he's going to finish as a top five MVP guy this year. He looked great in that game. He just couldn't do anything about his receivers, and that's been a problem for the Ravens forever, Usually and they never wise. fix it. Yep. Zay Flowers looks good, but OBJ's hurt. Nelson Aguilar can't catch a ball. He never has been able to. Rashad Bateman's usually hurt. Yeah, oh. I mean, we've got kind of a cluster of just usually injury-prone receivers and then Lamar not getting a whole lot of help. So, yeah, I can – I can sit with that one. So I've got the Ravens, and then I am just marking down hometown teams. Don't do it. I, I said I normally don't do it, and I normally don't do it, but I still did it. Never again. <laughs> Who are you canceling? I think that was the fantasy world. Because I remember you going, like, I'm keeping my heart away from my wallet. And you're like, you know, just this once. And <laughs> fantasy you gods. Think you know said, a guy. Never mind. You yeah, think you think you know, know a guy, a guy. right? And disaster. Not too much uh, passion behind this one, but somebody I've gone out of my way to avoid, not only in drafts, but now as we hit kind of the third way point through the season. Damian Pierce, fantasy-wise, don't do it. Um, if you're in standard and half PPR leagues, maybe do it. Um, I believe he's a little undervalued there. But this guy had volume and efficiency going for him last year. He was averaging more than four yards a carry. The Texans were one of the weirdest teams in the league in that they lost a boatload of games but still ran the ball a ton. They, they didn't seem to care about the fact they were down 28. They liked Damian Pierce. This year, he's averaging less than three yards a carry, has 20-plus touches in the last two games, and Devin Singletary is now outperforming him by about a half yard per carry. Uh, 12 targets in five games, not running any routes, kind of the same prototype as Derrick Henry, except he's young and not efficient right now. Uh, yeah, low efficiency and minimal receiving involvement, that's a red flag for me. Don't mess with Damian Pierce. Yeah, and last year, he was the fantasy sweetheart heading into the season, oh and he had gosh. a good year, he but... Did. Yeah, this year it, it hasn't been the same, and they even brought in Singletary, like you said, because it clearly was an issue. Um, we're going to go to break, and on the other side, we've got a rescue plan for all these injuries that we're talking about. Um, we've got our picks, and we've got our group parlay, uh, as, long, as well as the touchdown scores on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Welcome back to the Daily Dodge betting show on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam and Daily Dodge TV. I'm Charlie Dern. He's Corey Sparks. We've got a loaded second half, uh, so let's just dive right in. Um, let's go over a rescue plan. For all these injuries that have occurred this week in the NFL, there was multiple players that ended up on the IR with injuries, and then there's also been kind of some you know, changes going on uh, in the fantasy world. So let's just get right into it. Uh, Devon A. Chain, he's on the IR until week 11 with a knee injury. And he wasn't somebody that people had really drafted originally, but he was now the centerpiece of a lot of people's teams. So what do you do there? Yeah, uh, just I would say running backs in general here. We've got, we've got to go with Ty J Spears. I think he's a good fill-in, 36% rostered. You bring up a good point, Charlie. No one really wasted draft capital, and I don't want to say wasted. He turned out fine on Devon Achan, um, but he was probably your best running back until last week. So Ty J Spears, good solution, rostered in 36% of leagues. Um, he's been in for 50% of snaps or more in four of the last five games. Now, when we talk about Derrick Henry and his career, I don't think we've seen that. I don't think we know anybody notable who has been his backup running back that's gotten significant usage. And Ty J. Spears is not there yet, but from a PPR perspective, he almost is. He has at least four targets in four of the last five games, or I guess four of the first five games. Uh, third favorite target on the team behind DeAndre Hopkins and Aconquo. And he's way more efficient than Derrick Henry. Now, I kind of teased this before. 5.8 yards per carry right now for Ty J. Spears. On a limited sample size, Derrick Henry 3.8. So he's beating him by two yards every single play. 
Obviously, he looks quicker. Derrick Henry's got so many years on him. He's knocking on the door of 30 years old. But Ty J. Spears, I think, is a very good solution just at running back in general here. All right, let's move on to James Conner. He uh, fell into the IR with a knee injury. Uh, he's going to miss at least four games. And he's a guy that's more or less just consistent. He's not really, like, your centerpiece running back, but he's a good running back, too. Yeah, James Conner, uh, also one that's pretty unfortunate on a team that is probably still going to lose a handful of games, so we're not expecting a ton of usage, but they've been, they've been playing it pretty balanced right now. I'm going to turn into a flex play here. So we've got Rasheed Rice owned in 29% of leagues. Uh, number two target on that Chiefs team right now, it was supposed to be Kadarius Toney. It's not. Uh, Kadarius Toney had stone hands in the first week, and even right now, he's not catching a whole lot down the field. He's kind of been that check down guy. I think Andy Reid is using him as more of a safe haven and underneath routes. He doesn't want to take the chances of drops. Phenomenal matchup tonight against Denver. Oh, my goodness. 13th most fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. We know their secondary can, can get torn up. We saw the Bears do it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I think Rasheed Rice as a flex play is going to go in for James Conner here. And you mentioned Derrick Henry earlier and playing Spears over him, but are you still starting Derrick Henry? You drafted him probably in the first round, so you kind of have to still play him, right? If you're in the Derrick Henry boat, we're going to stick it through right now. Unfortunately, not the greatest situation. I'm honestly trying to sell Derrick Henry. If he has another good game like he had in week four, deal him high, and I do think you'd be dealing him pretty high. Ty J. Spears, the reason I brought him up is if you're in a pinch and you've got someone who's literally out like Devon A. Chain or James Conner, then we go and make that move. But no, if you have Derrick Henry right now, it's not only a matter of I spent some pretty decent draft capital on this guy. It's You probably don't have a better option because you did that. So yeah, we're sticking with Derrick Henry. Look to sell him in the next couple of weeks. I think it's only down from here, unfortunately. Absolute legend. Love King Henry. But I think it's his time. That's a bummer. It That's is a, a bummer. bummer. Well, speaking of draft capital, Justin Jefferson went down. It's uh, on the IR with a hamstring injury. Right now, it's just four games. And the... Uh, Kevin O'Connell said it's not going to be season-ending, but with his contract problem, who knows? And so, yeah, first overall pick kind of consensus. What do you do there? Yeah, that was that was your first rounder. Unless you are in a family league that is off the cuff <laughs> and just decided to be really funny and take everybody else but Justin Jefferson in the first round, you're probably feeling pretty down in the dumps right now. We're going to take the simple answer here and go with K.J. Osborne. Not my favorite pick in the world. Again, you can go Rasheed Rice, too, if you want to play the flex option. K.J. Osborne is now owned in 60% of rosters. When we typed this script up yesterday, it was 45. So it's rising. He's in demand. Go get him now if you can. But yeah, Justin Jefferson down. The reason I really do like K.J. Osborne is the opportunity. Um, Minnesota throws the ball 70.5% of the time. That's more often than anybody else in the league. And then you look at the opposition, weak opposition. Jalen Johnson, cornerback one, we talked about this before, bruised up. Probably not going to play. Keep an eye on his status. Eddie Jackson, free safety, questionable as well. So very best case scenario for the Bears, I guess, you have a secondary that is bruised up and is going to play their guys at not 100%. Best case scenario for the Vikings and guys like K.J. Osborne, you don't even have to worry about him. And he's not the primary worry for this Bears secondary. It's going to be Jordan Addison. So focus is off him. Weak opposition. They're bruised up. I think K.J. Osborne's not a safe play, but one of the best on the market right now. And then moving to Anthony Richardson at quarterback. Uh, he's on the IR with a shoulder sprain. It's potentially season-ending if he does uh, require surgery. Uh, he was a guy that you probably took in the later rounds, uh, maybe middle tier if you're in a 14-man like I am. Yep. Are you replacing the quarterback? I mean, you, well, you have to replace Richardson, but. Yeah, we're going to go and get Matthew Stafford. Um, I think this one actually has more upside than people think, specifically for a plug-and-play this week. He's facing Arizona. They've allowed the fourth most amount of fantasy points to quarterbacks. His number one option in Cooper Cup is back. Let's keep it simple, folks. You've got one of the most dynamic weapons in the league. And it's coin toss right now with him only being owned in half of league. So I like Stafford here. All right. I think that's a safe rescue plan. Oh, yeah. If, I think so, too. If you're, you know, it might be like Flex Seal, you know. Yeah, you're, it's you're, not you're, optimal, you're, yeah. but you got to think on your feet, right? All right. I like it. I like it. Well, let's move on to our picks. Um, we've got two picks and a touchdown score and then our group parlay. Um, I'll start us off with Thursday Night Football. Uh, the Broncos are at the Chiefs, and they're 11-point underdogs over under of 47 points. Um, I'm a little nervous about this one. Okay. I, I saw about an hour ago that it's official. Taylor Swift <laughs> will be in attendance. That's something you have to look up. Taylor now. Swift yeah. is there, and I'm not sure how to handicap that. Um, the Chiefs are one and one against the spread when Taylor Swift has been there. So you know, there's there's not a lot you can really do with that. That's but a stat now. <laughs> it's something to think about and keep in mind um, as we move forward. Kelsey's not 100. Uh, he's gonna play. It looks like, but 
still after he suffered that ankle injury in Minnesota last week. I'm not a big fan. Uh, Mahomes is 22 and two straight up as a double digit favorite. Okay. But he's 10, 13 and one against the spread as a double digit favorite. Interesting. So I like the Broncos in this spot. A short week. Uh, it's gonna be windy. Uh, there's a uh, 10 to 15 mile per hour winds at the game. Uh, so I think there's gonna be a lot of lot of running. I think that um, McLaughlin looked good for the Broncos last week, and then Javante Williams is coming back. So mm. I think they're going to look to run it a lot, get the ball out of Russ's hands, and make sure he's not making, <sighs> making bad throws, making bad plays. Uh, in these two teams' last 10 games, they are 5-5 five and five against the spread. The, uh, the Chiefs have won 10 straight, though. So I am a little worried that they're going to take a little bit of their anger out and really get their offense clicking against probably the worst defense that we've seen in years. Yeah. Short week. Windy, short week. I'm taking the Broncos plus 11 in this game. What's your first pick? I like that. You got a little bit of everything. You got the Taylor Swift factor, the weather, Mahomes against the spread stats. <laughs> I'm going to roll back to my man with uh, Kenneth Walker the third. He did me right two weeks ago. We're going to roll back to him. Great matchup here. Over 65 and a half rushing yards against Cincinnati. I'm playing the fresh legs card here. They are coming off of a bye week. The Bengals allow 154 rushing yards a game. That's the second most in the league. Walker III broke out his rookie year, looks to be in about the same pace, and he's hard to bring down. Seven broken tackles. That's tied for ninth most in the league, and he missed a week. Most teams have not had a bye yet, so volume galore as well. He's had 17, 18, and 17 rushes over the course of the last three games. This guy's going to get fed, and I think he'll do well in this situation. Going over to London. I've got the Titans plus four and a half against the Ravens. Uh, that is a total of 40 and a half. So it's a really low total in London. Okay. Uh, it's at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, so there's no roof. Uh, weather could be a factor. It's London. It might rain. I haven't even really checked the weather on that one. Um, this is sort of a spite pick. I'll be honest. I just canceled the Ravens earlier <laughs> in the show. I can't unsee that performance from their wide receivers. I still really like the Ravens, and I think they're a good team. I think that they're going to be a team that makes the playoffs, but I can't unsee that game, and I don't think that they just turn it around in one week, especially after flying five or six hours to get to London. Um, in their last 10, straight up, the Titans and Ravens have split the games five and five. Um, London games, the favorites are 16, uh, or well, it's 500 against the spread. Mm -hmm. So it, it's working towards the Titans there. Um, Mike Vrabel is always great against the spread after losing. Uh, he's seven and one straight up, and five and three as a road underdog. I'm not sure if I count London as being a, a road I underdog. I guess neutral, right? They're on yeah. the road. They're not at home. That's fair. Um, and then in October, Mike Vrabel has covered nine of his last ten games, and Vrabel is 23, 11 and one against the spread all time, with a spread higher than plus three. So I really like Vrabel as an underdog. And normally, I talked about it earlier in the show, I normally pick against Ryan Tannehill because mm -hmm. I don't believe in him. Yep. But I think this is a good bounce back spot for them after they lost on the road to the Colts. Um, for your second pick, you've got the 49ers minus seven against the Browns with a total of 37 and a half. Low total. Yeah. Uh, six and a half yesterday. And now with the low total, I'm getting a little more worried. I'm going to stick to my guns here. San Fran just obliterated a... Top five team, in air quotes, in Dallas. Levels above other teams. Could be an ugly game. It's in Cleveland. We're going to get some rain. But they've got the best running back in the NFL. So if they're going to have to go run heavy, don't see that being much of an issue. They're scoring 13 points per game as a team. That's the second most in the league. And the Browns are bruised up. Deshaun Watson, Jerome Ford, David Njoku, and Miles Garrett, the main reason this team has won any game so far because their defense has been so strong, all listed as questionable at the time of this recording. So... I, I think I'm going to roll with the Niners here. That game makes me nervous. It's going to be rainy, slow game in Cleveland. It's mm -hmm. a noon game. It kind of feels like the Niners are riding this all-time high, and then if Deshaun Watson's able to play and some of those guys on the Browns are able to get healthy, that you know they might sneak their way into losing by like five, Ugh, four. I hope not. They might sneak in there. I think the, the Niners are definitely a touchdown better than the Browns, mm -hmm. especially with all those injuries, but just with – the weather, it's a big theme this week, is the weather. Oh, yeah. Uh, with the weather in that game and it just being a home game for the Browns, they need to take advantage of the division not being great. I kind of like them there. Um, for a touchdown pick, I've got TJ Hawkinson. Now, you were talking about the Vikings earlier. Uh, it's Kirk Tober. Um, <laughs> they didn't look great against the Chiefs, but I think the Chiefs are have a better defense than people give them credit for. Um, Hawkinson has the team lead in red zone targets behind Jeff Justin Jefferson, but Jefferson's out. Right. Um, so I like that part of it. Um, 
Hawkinson has not caught a touchdown since he caught two touchdowns in week two. Uh, and the Bears' defense against tight ends has been bad this year. Luke Musgrave on the Packers, he caught 50 yards. Uh, that's his season high. Cade Otten on the Bucks, 41 yards. That's his season high. Travis Kelsey got 69 yards and a touchdown. Uh, and then Logan Thomas caught 77 yards and one touchdown, which is also his season high, all against the Bears. I really like TJ Hawkinson in this spot. Uh, for your touchdown pick, did you really take a jet I did to take score a, jet. a touchdown? <laughs> I did take a From jet. From Zach Wilson? This is risky. Yeah, I'm All going right. with the other Wilson. Garrett Wilson against Philly. If there's one of my three that could fail, I'm putting my cards on this one. But there's a lot going for it. Uh, Wilson does get his chances. Nine red zone targets. That's the third most in the league so far. The Eagles, believe it or not, do allow 2.2 passing touchdowns per game. That's one of the highest rates in the league. Justin Evans, strong safety. Darius Slay, cornerback one. On the injury report at the moment, they're both questionable. If Slay is out, I really like this pick, and I think the odds get a lot worse for it, but that's okay. Eagles are seven-point favorites at the moment. Working from behind means pass-heavy scheme. Even if it's a garbage-time touchdown, I like Garrett Wilson with a touchdown here. We'll see. We'll see. All right, let's move to our group parlay. Um, my first pick is C.D. Lamb, anytime touchdown. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it yesterday, but uh, I think it was Richard Sherman or somebody on the air said that C.D. Lamb is closer to a number two wide receiver than a number one. CD then replied to that context and said, just said, LOL. Uh, and he's been angry at the Cowboys for not really targeting as much as he wants to. He, so far in his career, this is the lowest amount of targets he's gotten through week five. Um, so I think he's going to be playing angry, and he's only scored one touchdown this year, playing against the Chargers secondary that stinks. So I like CD Lamb to get a touchdown. Uh, for your, yours, you've got a total. I do have a total. First time doing it, so we'll see if it goes well. Washington at Atlanta, under 42 and a half I'm going. Atlanta scores 16.6 points per game. Washington to 21.8. Your boy did some math. That's less than 42.5. There is more than that. Uh, Falcons struggling to thrive outside of utilizing Bijan, who obviously has been everything as advertised so far. The Commanders got held at just 20 points by a bruised up Bears secondary and had plenty of drop issues. They were not the Ravens, but they were pretty dang close. And then Atlanta's secondary is nasty right now. 191 passing yards per game allowed. That's the seventh lowest rate in the NFL. This is going to be an ugly slug fest. I would not be shocked if it goes under 40. All right, we need a third pick. So we've got three picks to choose from. I've got Kirk Cousins over one and a half passing touchdowns against that Bears secondary. Dak Prescott over 257 and a half passing yards against the Chargers. And then we've got Dolphins first half minus seven and a half against the Panthers. What do you like there? Happy Kirktober. <laughs> Happy Kirktober? <laughs> all right, all right. Happy Kirktober, everybody. We'll add Kirk Cousins over one and a half passing touchdowns. Let's just hope Alexander Madison doesn't get any rushing touchdowns, True. and we should be all right. Uh, and that's a uh, wrap on the Daily Dodge betting show on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Thanks, as always, for joining us. Uh, you can find these episodes on DailyDodge.com and YouTube. And good luck this weekend in week six of the NFL on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaverdam.